Deb Bunnell here, teaching artist with Southern Allegheny's Museum of Art and also the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts. Welcome to Love Every Brushstroke. Now this video will have three parts. First, about loving every brushstroke. Second, about one of my favorite subjects, blueberries or paint what you love. And third, the main part I wanted to get across in this video is starting to paint a little outside your comfort zone. It's a way of growing, it's a way of shaking things up and getting a little new life into your style of painting. So this would be my comfort zone. I figured the second painting would be outside my comfort zone. Well, what kind of happened was, yeah, the first painting's in my comfort zone and the second painting is only a little bit outside my comfort zone. I still did a lot of the things I enjoy doing, although I did shake it up color and composition wise and not paying attention to the reference when I didn't feel like it. My favorite painting professor's favorite advice to students was love every brush stroke. And it's true that I can love every brush stroke and come up with a bad painting. But it's also true that I don't think I can come up with a good painting without loving every brush stroke. And I find that the more that I paint and learn about color interactions, the greater weight my well-loved brush strokes will carry. Do I manage to love every brush stroke? No. I often work in it with an underpainting, like a, a rough painting before the, the final layer of paint goes on. And it sort of gives me a map and an idea where I'm going color wise. And when I'm working that way, my attitude is let's get her done so we can get on to the really the fun stuff, the final touches. And I realize I'm throwing the word love around and just talking about painting. What I really mean is a feeling of of concentration, of focus, and care. And when I find myself losing that, I tend to take a break and come back later for a fresh perspective. Now it's time to talk about my obsession. I'll admit it, it's an obsession with blueberries. And in advance, sorry about the barking dog. Yeah. Okay, here I am in a very young blueberry patch. My dog's a little bit upset. Maybe she sees a ripe blueberry or something, but the blueberries are pretty green yet, which is good because we don't have the netting fixed to keep all the birds away. But I know Chummy, so I'm seeing some good pies toward the end of June. I, I'll see what Chummy's barking at. Maybe there is a ripe one. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Oh, oh. Chummy, it's not even ripe. It's it's still purple, it's not blue. You still want it? Okay. All right, there you go. <laughs> Chummy loves the blueberries. <laughs> Here's the blueberry colored wall in my dining room. You can see I have family portraits on it. Unfortunately, they're about a decade old, but the colors all go with blueberry color. There's my mother-in-law as a young woman forming a snowball. And here you can see the rag technique on the wall, mostly blues, but some magenta and pale green indicating unripe blueberries. I have loved blueberries for as long as I can remember. Here are some of my vintage trolls from the 1960s. When my cousin Sue and I got our very first troll, we decided to name it our favorite words in the world. And those four words are blueberry, belly button, smudge, midget. Emphasis on blueberry. When I buy a set of dishes or a bowl, I try to imagine if blueberries will look good in it. They usually do. All right, how about that comfort zone now? I'm going to show you two different paintings that show my normal range of approaches to painting. This is a painting called Resilience in Shades of Gray. It's very detailed and subtle, I used all the grays in the background to enhance the colors of the foliage in front and of the colors of the flowers in front. And those are just roadside flowers, very resilient. This painting of my friend's goat, Manny, 
is a more dynamic painting. I've used bigger brush strokes and more extreme colors. It's also a bigger painting, which made it easier to, to do that. But I exaggerated the colors and even put in colors that I felt as opposed to colors I saw, like in the soil in the background. I'm seeing aquas and blues and purples along with the browns and grays you'd normally find. And in the goat himself, his chestnut brown has magenta and blue in it. His white parts have lavender and blue and cream in them. Let's get into these blueberry paintings. To get the image on the canvas, I use the grid method. I gridded off my reference photograph, put the same grid on my large canvas, and here is the pencil. It's a pretty detailed drawing. I wanted to capture the rhythms and the angles of the leaves and the twigs with those round berries juxtaposed in there. You can see I did add a few more berries up near the top. This will be the more conservative of the two paintings, although there will be some playfulness with color and outlines um, kind of pushing the colors in a more extreme direction. But nothing, nothing too drastic. And the outlines will be um, maybe not even much related to the object being outlined. get in the way. I've learned drawing blueberries that they have five of these little spikes around that little little cute circle that used to be a blossom. And then maybe there's some other red blueberries. I'm not saying this blueberry is going to be red, but it has some red in the outline. As long as it's on my brush. Mm. Leaves could be red. I am going to turn this on to time lapse photography. so you can enjoy it coming together a little more quickly. Gosh, that looks fun at this point. I almost feel like leaving it like that. It would make a really good print on a shirt or something like that. The colors that you see there will be mostly embedded in this first painting. You only see them peeking through if you look closely here and there. So that was my safety painting. I'm going to be painting that one in a way I've painted before, a little looser than I sometimes paint but um, in a comfortable way. So the second one, I'm going out of my comfort zone. I don't have any pencil lines on it. I'm just going to paint it from what I see on the first one. So you'll see me painting the, the top half and then turning things around and painting the bottom half. And then I will have the beginnings of two paintings.
Drawing this more or less freehand with a paintbrush, certain things happen. I made the blueberries bigger than they actually are and wasn't quite as accurate on the angles of the twigs and leaves. I wasn't careful about the color balance and arrangement as I was in the first one. I did, however, get some fabulous drips and smudges. We'll see if I can keep embracing spontaneity when I paint it. Back to the first one. For painting number one, I'm going to start with the shadow areas. I'm going to look at the reference and get the shadow areas in first. And um, they'll be a little more colorful than what they are on the reference. I'm not going to paint them black. They might be blues or purples, most likely. So the purple background and shadows were a fun and happy idea, but at this stage it is looking a little bit harsh and scary. I'm ready to attack painting number one with some green. Get that foliage in, see what the purple looks like, see what we need to do to make the purple work. Maybe gray it down a bit, we'll see. It'll be fun. You can see I'm leaving some oranges, yellows, and magentas in and around the leaves and twigs. And looking at the purple, it is still seeming a little harsh, like it might take attention away from the main event. Do you ever save the most fun part of the painting for last, like putting the highlights in the eyes? It's like, it's like dessert or the icing on the cake or something. Well, I've saved the blueberries for last and it's gonna be fun. I'm going to include some more blueberries than are actually on the reference, plus make the um, put in the branches and I may make the blueberries a different color. So when everything's in, I'll be able to see how much I like all the green that's there and what to do with the purple background.
Now there is paint over the entire canvas of painting number one. I will end up painting a second coat on almost everything but the blueberries. In this second coat, I will love every brush stroke. I will love that bright purple background into being a soft, deep, receding purple background. But now for painting number two, out of the comfort zone. Painting number two of the blueberries. I decided I wanted to paint with it flat on a table because I can press harder as I'm painting and I just work better that way. Now this may seem like an odd thing to do. I have planned for a feeling of spontaneity. I know that's an oxymoron, but um, it was really valuable because it's almost like planning an abstract and there are just so many ways you can go if you're not um, painting directly from the reference. So the first thing I tried was just colors I love and sort of a background of blueberry feeling. And it just, um, I like it, but it's a little jumbly. Then I tried really toning down the colors, but keeping some teal in there. And one thing that started to develop was a cross. And um, like a slanted cross, an X or whatever you want to call it. That is always a good composition thing to have, especially if it divides the canvas up into four unequal shapes and it's not like a you know, straight X or anything. It's a, a wobbly X, but it's always an interesting compositional device. Then I tried something darker with some browns and rusts and something with some lavenders, didn't like that a whole lot. Then I tried something really dark background and gosh, it ended up looking a lot like the real painting of blueberries that I just, you know, push myself a little bit. So I went back to the teals and magentas, but organized them a little more. So I still am working with the cross, but some really pale colors and emphasizing random blueberries. And I think this will be a fun way to go. So that's what I'm going to be looking at mostly as I redo, as I um, paint this second blueberry painting. One thing I have to change is when I drew this leaf, I didn't slant it enough and it's more interesting slanted. So you'll see on my, on my big canvas down here, I'm going to uh, slant that main vein of the leaf some more and then just go to town with the colors.
This is the messy palette after painting number two. I used so much more paint than I did in the first painting. I guess because I was mixing colors that were new to me and it was sort of experimental for me. Here's that finished painting. As I was painting it, I felt I was painting a la prima, which literally means at first attempt, doing it all in one coat. But after looking at it for a day, I realized I needed to re-emphasize my composition with that X that I started with. And that involved darkening some colors, lightening some, and muting or graying down some others. Now I'm liking it. I like the first painting too. It has a relaxed, natural feel, like a close-up of the wonderful world inside a blueberry bush. What shocked me, though, is how similar the two paintings turned out. I guess when I leave my comfort zone, it's truly with baby steps. I decided to have a conversation with my wild child self about my two different paintings. What was I thinking? What was I trying to achieve? With just a little playfulness of color, I wanted to show the sunlight on the blueberries, the rhythm of the branches and leaves, and even the weed leaf that's growing back in there. Huh, yeah, notice that weed in there. I wanted to show my passion for blueberries in a more dynamic way. Yours is a little bit like a photograph. Don't even say photograph. I exaggerated the colors I did. I put oranges and fuchsias and yellows in the twigs and leaves. I put blues and greens and purples in all the shadows. Your blueberries do look so real. Yeah, I wanted to honor the actual colors of the berries, which are just gorgeous. I wanted you to feel like you could take, pick a handful of sun warm blueberries, stick them in your mouth and enjoy that little piece of heaven. Really? What? Nothing, nothing. It does make me kind of hungry though. Mm. Mm. Hey, save some of those for me. And how about telling me what you were thinking when you did your painting? I was thinking, I love blueberries. I love teal, I love magenta, I love cobalt blue. I love all the pale shades of gray that came about from mixing complementary colors. I wanted to show action, brush strokes, spontaneity. <laughs> what? I happen to know that you did at least six thumbnail paintings before you started your painting. I didn't do any. That's a lot of planning for a spontaneous painting, don't you think? I, on the other hand, didn't have anything really complex to work out. Right, right. When I decided to let myself do anything I wanted with this blueberry painting, it's overwhelming. I, I needed a plan and I decided to use my favorite colors to show off my favorite food. I wanted it to have mm, action, excitement. I want it to be a lot different from yours. Thanks so much. Nah, yours is lovely. I'm sure a lot of people find it exciting. You know what bugs me? When people paint blueberries and they pick the brightest blue in their paint box, they're really a lovely soft, Ah, oh, I'm not gonna lie, I was conflicted about that. But as soon as I put on that cobalt blue straight out of the tube, I was like, yeah. But we tell people not to paint with colors straight out of the tube. No, that's all you. I am the rule breaker. How does it feel to break your own rules? Actually, it was really enjoyable. When I painted it, it was with a great sense of fun, just following the plan from my thumbnail. And you know what? I loved every brushstroke. Well, that's what it's all about.